The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the April 14th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and mostly sellers are communicating to you and I at just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone and dial on in to 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question, that'd be great. And, of course, inside our Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we got a little bit of a mixed bag out here. That mix is coming from the Dow, which is up seven points. So it's flat. All the other industries trading the downside. The S&P is off seven tenths or 35 points. NASDAQ 100, one and six tenths percent, 233 points. Russell's down seven tenths, eight tenths, 15 points. Semis are off one and eight tenths, 57 points. Trend is down four tenths, 58 points. You've got gold trading up at uh, 1975. That's off nine dollars. Silver is trading down at 2566. That's off 37 cents. Light speed crude at 105.45. That's up a buck 20. Natural gas up 29 cents. Another strong day there. Seven dollars and 28 cents. That is uh, continuing. That is motoring on higher. The 30-year Treasury is off two points right now. Two points and three ticks. She's trading out at 141.03. So. Where do we want to begin? Let's begin here. We're going to switch back and forth to a couple of charts. Let's begin by this daily view first of the uh, equity future contracts out here. And that should show up. So what do we know about the ES Mini? We know that you've got a uh, – that it's going to complete a TD9 count pattern today. Today will be the bar following bar number nine. So far, the low is bar number eight. So we got a valid signal. Price has struggled, as I said, during the update to uh, get inside its daily profile. So that's your real resistance level, 44.52. Inside the NQ, it will also complete a TD9 count pattern today. So far, the low is bar number eight. Uh, it is just, well, actually, there's a new profile that is formed, and price is trading right now below the bottom of the profile. And that's not a good scene. So the level you're going to want to watch today is 14.012. 14.012, 14.012. If price is able to close back above it, okay, a crisis averted. Closes below it, well, then it's going to go at least take on that bar number eight, maybe signaling actually that that pattern would fail and it move back to 13.417. The Dow, which is the strong one of this group here, is showing some weakness in that uh, oscillator and change line is acting as resistance. Now, the Dow also has a new profile. It doesn't show on the white background charts. We'll show those in a few moments, with the top of the profile being 34.711, the bottom being 34.103. The reason it doesn't show here is this is a new profile that is attempting to form. So I won't have a confirmation on that. Well, until Sunday evening. What we don't like is what the Russell, the signal of the Russell 2000. Now, the Russell 2000 has new profile. 1980-73, basically, is support. But what the uh, Russell 2000 has done over the course of the last three sessions here is it has gotten up, tested, and rejected that red oscillator and change line. Now, that says lower price, but because we have the new profile, that lower price target would become that 1980 level out there. So that's what these charts are telling us. We're going to switch screens. It'll be easier for you to see the profiles that have formed or the ones that are attempting to form. And here is going to be our daily time frame look. So you can see the ES Mini. That's in the upper left. 
Sports in the left-hand panel, you can see the bottom of that profile, 4452. So support is the center of its weekly profile, and that's priced at the 4383 level. The NQ, that actually did confirm a new profile uh, last night. And again, the bottom of that profile, which is a key level of support, is 14.012.92 out there. Close below that says uh, we've got lower price coming. Now, that lower price may just be a test of that TD9 count bottom. The Dow, it's attempting to form a new profile. The support level will be 34.103. And 34.711 would be the resistance area. The Russell 2000 confirmed a new profile yesterday. We talked about our support should be 1980.73. We can see how resistance held, and that's at the 20.37.25 area. If we uh, break this down just a tad further and we go take a look at our multi time frame charts out here, we can see how the ES mini upper right, you can see how the center of that profile has acted as support. Now, price was above that profile for three consecutive weeks. When you close above the top of a bearish structure profile, any move back inside it says that it would only be a counter trend move if price could hold the center. That 4383 is a very key level inside of the ES mini. If that fails, that says we head to lower ground. If we take a look at the NQ out here, the NQ, we already talked about how price is trading right now below the bottom of that daily profile. It's also trading into support. That's the support of its weekly bullish structured profile. That support range being 13405 to 13868. So it's really going to be all about the uh, low, quite frankly, from April the 12th. That's so far the TD9 count bottom. If price closes below that, 13881 Then that says we head to lower ground, and I would say 13405 would become the target. If we take a look at the uh, Dow equity future contract for its multi time frames out here, not much else for us to report to other than right now you've got price consolidating with inside each of the profiles, whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, or quarterly out there. And then finally, we take a look at the Russell 2000. You can see the new profile in the uh, left hand upper left hand panel. You can see that price also has support at about 1928. So you got 1980 in the daily, 1928 on the uh, weekly charts out there. So those are your equity future contracts. Peter in Park City wanted to uh, also take a look at the uh, spot ball, uh, I'm sorry, at the uh, New York Stock Exchange advanced decline oscillator, which still remains below zero, Peter. And as long as it remains below zero, that says that sellers are the ones in control. And we certainly could see a move lower out there. There. Peter also wanted to take a look at the 30-year Treasury just to get a feel for things. So for the 30-year Treasury, we're going to go take a look at this nine-panel chart out here. And as we open up this nine-panel chart, what you're going to notice is uh, there's a couple of different A to B equals CD patterns. Lower left shows you the big one that is in play out here. That big A to B equals CD gives you a one-to-one -one price projection of 131.22. Now, there's a, also A to B equals CD patterns on the daily time frame. There's two out there. So a bullish reversal candle could signal a short-term bottom. Um, but we don't have that just yet. And price is trading below the bottom of that daily profile. That suggests lower price. So that lower price area, the first target to the downside, where there may be support is at 138.22. We're not that far away from it. I thought we were far away from it when we began the week, but we are not far away from it now. We're trading at 140.31. So we basically have about two more points to the downside where price should find support. And if price closes below that 138.22 level, of course, that's a quarterly time frame, and we just began the quarter. But nonetheless, if price gets below that during the quarter out here that's going to be suggesting a move back to that 131 22 level so peter there's a detailed look at the equity futures the new york stock exchange as well as the 30-year treasury i know you wanted to take a look at goldilocks as well goldilocks is uh, wanting higher price and that higher price uh, level out here where are we headed to we're likely headed to the top of its weekly profile, and that's at the 1991 level. Steve Rhodes with We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com.
TFNSports.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we had a couple of requests that came in yesterday afternoon. I apologize. I don't recall who. I just uh, remember uh, getting the charts here set up so that we could take a look at it. And it's two symbols. The first one is EPV. That is the ultra short uh, FTSE Europe ETF out here, trading out at 1273. Above the top of its daily profile, that suggests a move higher. That move higher would likely take us to 1339. But before we see that, it's really the monthly time frame chart that is uh, giving you the large picture. Let's see if I can get this somehow to explain up there we go so now you can see it's expanded up we can see that price has been simply just been consolidated on a monthly basis for a long period of time going back to october of 2021 with inside that profile that's between 1147 at the bottom and 1303 at the top so you really need to see it close above 1303 in order for this to then make its move to 1339 and above 1339 you could be looking at 1605 if we look at the white background charts here for epv let's see what kind of signals we have we have uh, really nothing you could generate a td9 count top uh you would do that on a Monday out here. But right now, that's not the pattern. If anything, what I see is an A to B equals CD to the upside. But remember, we just took a look at that resistance level on that monthly time frame. That's a key area that price has to overcome. You do have a TD9 count top on a weekly basis for this. And price may be wanting to pull back to 11.08. Um, that's its message to us. And monthly, nothing else out there. So that's what's going on when we take a look at EPV. The second request was, I believe, might have been Brazil or something, EWZS. Let's go find out what EWZS. WZS is and uh, whether this is a short or a long this is the Brazil small cap ETF out here it is trading with inside its daily profile right now testing one support level so your support on a daily time frame is between 1601 and 1623 it's trading right now at 1624 above the top of the weekly profile that is bullish signal consolidating with inside the monthly profile let's go see what the white background chart suggests is going on with E w z s let's begin by taking a look at the daily time frame well, the daily time frame charts out here what do we have well today is going to become bar number seven as price is motoring down into its bullish structured daily profile so if you're looking to enter this 
It's between the range of 1601 and 1623, but I would wait for a TD nine count bottom to complete. This is bar number seven. That says sometime next week uh, you might have that, uh, let's say, by Wednesday out there. So maybe you want to check back in. But if price holds a 1601 level, you get to a TD nine count bottom. That would be your signal from a daily standpoint. From a weekly standpoint, uh, right now, I've got a sell the D point pattern. The sell the D point pattern suggests that EWZS should pull back to the 1525 level. I'd say 1503, 1525, 1542 would become its price targets. The monthly chart out here, what do we have? Not much. So the monthly is not a system. So it's really the daily and the weekly out here. And we have uh, both of those say lower price. The question is, will 1601 hold this support or will price get down to the 1525 to 1542 level? So thanks so much for writing in um, and uh, it uh, would be more helpful to me if uh, if you if you folks are sending requests just to do it the day of the show the morning of the show um, out there because it's going to be easy for me to overlook those things and yeah, look if you're taking the time to write in I want to go ahead and do that and and review that for you it's just when they're coming in in the afternoon after the show's over the night before I just get too many emails and it's easy to to, to miss those so I don't want to do that so uh, if you could uh, if you could send those in on the day of the show that would be most helpful to me uh, uh, a real quick check here. I don't think we have anything else. Any other requests? I don't believe there's anything inside the Tiger's Den uh, that we have. And speaking of the Tiger's Den, folks, you can, I believe you can still join that for $1 for a full year. Full year's membership in the Tiger's Den. An extraordinary group of individuals in there. So I really do recommend that. So no requests that I see in the Tiger's Den or by email out there. And that says uh, we've got the freedom to uh, do whatever we want to do. So what do we want to do? I'll tell you what we want to do. We want to try to understand these markets, what they're communicating to us. Now, granted, it is. it should be a light volume day, right? It should be a light volume day. Is it a light volume day? Well, Let's go take a look and, and, and uh, at a couple of instruments. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to change screens. And we're going to go take a look at the NDX 100. The reason is because, as I mentioned at the top of the show and during the show, that price was trading below the bottom of its daily profile, which is not a good scene out there. Now, there's one other thing that we want to do. And I believe we're on the right screen to be able to do that. And that is to take a look at where its speed dials are at. So that, here's, that's the S&P. We want to take a look at the NDX 100. So you the NDX 100, the 60, the 240, the daily. Boy, it's really close on the weekly are in a bearish formation. We are in bearish formation on all four time frames. The monthly chart shows that there are 25 instruments trading below the bottom of the monthly chart. Bottom of the, bottom of the monthly profile. And um, weekly, that is. I'm sorry, weekly. I said monthly. I meant weekly. And 24 instruments trading above the top of the weekly profile. So you've got bearish crossovers uh, for all four time frames. That does not bode well for the NDX 100. So now let's go take a look at what's really going on underneath the covers. Here are the eight instruments that represent uh, over 50%, I believe, of the holdings with inside the NDX 100. Apple being number one. Now we're looking at this chart here. So Apple still has a TD9 count bottom. The only thing that negates that is a close below the low of April 11th, which is 165.50. Now I'm going to, we're going to try to switch back and forth uh, charts out here, AAPL. And Mr. Bill, I'm going to ask you to keep me straight. That means if I don't change a screen to hit me upside the head with that two by four and say, Stevie, life is happening for you. And I'll know exactly what you mean. Now, what, the reason why I wanted to change to the black background screen is much easier for me to get an accurate volume metrics here. That swing point, that TD9 count bottom, which was April the 11th, had 72 million shares. It's 124. We've been trading for four hours. It's 38 million shares, so it's 40 million. It's really close. So on a day that should be light volume, what do you mean by that? Well, tomorrow's a holiday. Basically, trading should somewhat evaporate from as soon as Stevie shows over, right? Yeah, you know, the guys and gals in New York, they got to stay to listen to this show, and they really should stay to listen to all shows. They probably aren't listening to any shows, and they're out of there. They're out of there. I think somebody posted something in the den, said it's 80 degrees in New York City. What do you think the odds are that uh, most folks are still at work? in new york city knowing that they're off tomorrow in the markets and so forth yeah so we got pretty good volume 
I would say, at this stage of the game for what should be a light volume day. Now, what that tells us simply is if, look, if price even closes inside of Apple below 169.03, it should still potentially target that low of 165.50. That TD9 count doesn't negate get negated by a test of it. It has to be a close below the uh, the threshold level, which is a low of the pattern. In this case here, that's a low from April 11. Okay, enough with Apple. Let's go to the, the next one, which is Microsoft. The Microsoft has a TD9 count on that same day, so MSFT, and we're going to go see what kind of volume Microsoft is doing into this swing point. So here it's a swing point from two days ago, April the 12th. The volume there was about 31 million shares. You're at 13. So the good news here at Microsoft is even though it's trading inside that swing point, it's not barreling down with volume. Still may test that low, but it uh, looks like maybe that TD9 count wants to hold. The next instrument is Amazon. Amazon formed its TD9 count pattern yesterday. It was the bar following bar number nine. And, uh, uh, and that had volume yesterday of 2.7 million shares. You're 1.5. So Amazon is pulling back with pretty decent volume. But there is a new profile that's formed here. And that says that price should find support at 3029. That should say that its TD9 count should remain in place out here. The next one is Facebook. It doesn't have a bottom signal, so no reason for us to look at that. Nor does Tesla. But NVIDIA has a TD9 count. And we want to go take a look at what's volume doing here. Now, NVIDIA's TD9 count took place in the bar following bar number nine, which was April the 12th. Volume there, 66 million. You're already at 35 million shares. So it looks like lighter volume for it. We'll be right back, folks. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. So we're back to the eight instruments here, the top eight instruments to make up the NDX 100 in a substantial weighting. And so uh, so Apple, even though it's pulling back, it still has its CD9 count bottom in place out there. Microsoft is pulling back on, on, on what might be in a kind of heavy volume. Microsoft light volume, CD9 count is still in place out there. Amazon, uh, I've got a new profile that should uh, help out with a support level to keep intact. It's TD9 count bottom. Facebook does not have a bottoming signal. Tesla does not have a bottoming signal, although price is pulling back into its bullish structured support level. Uh, NVIDIA uh, pulling back with a pretty decent volume, but still has that TD9 count bottom out there. Google today is going to form bar number eight. And that says that uh, Google on Monday could complete a or could form a TD9 count bottom. Abgo Broadcom is also going to form, well, it's going to complete a TD9 count bottom today with it being the bar following bar number uh, by bar number nine. So we've got, you know, you really have a battle going on inside the NDX 100, right? We took a look at the TAS market profile market breadth and everything was in negative position. Here we see the bottoms out here. So you kind of expect to see this if the market is going to make a turn. We don't know if it is or it isn't. It has all the bottoming signals, at least these eight charts. We don't have to stop with these eight charts here. We can go take a look at the next eight charts. So let's go do that, see what kind of signal information those are providing to us. And there we begin by taking a look at uh, cost COST, Costco, out here, and uh, no signals there worth watching. In the case of uh, Cisco, it is going to form bar number eight of a TD9 count pattern, That's and it's got a Rhodes Mentum indicator signal, just needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm that pattern, but it's getting ready to form a bottom. Um, bar number eight in Adobe out here today. So that says you could see a bottom form between today and Tuesday of next week. What else do we have? Intel. Now, Intel, this doesn't look good. Both Intel and AMD do not look good. So we're going to go take a look at the SMHs next. Because in the case of Intel, it's negating this TD9 count bottom. Granted, it's pulling back to the next level of support, which is a breakout level, 4573. But really, you want to see uh, Intel close above the uh, 4641 in order to maintain its TD9 count pattern. Uh, the same thing with regard to AMD. Now, AMD needs a close above. 9460, you're at 9490 right now to maintain its TD9 count, but it's also triggered a Rhodes Mentum indicator signal that needs a bullish reversal signal out here. But AMD's got a bottom. Uh, you've got Qualcomm has got a TD9 count bottom out here. Adobe's going to go ahead and generate a TD9 count bottom. Maybe uh, Cisco is as well out there. So got a lot of bottoming signals out here. That says next week going to be very interesting and should uh, tell us a lot. Well, let's go uh, switch over and take a look at the uh, SMHs out here. So give me a moment to change screens. So we'll go ahead and put those uh, stocks up on the screen as well for you. And let's go get a feel for what they're communicating to us, because if the SMHs have not bottomed, odds favor, nor has the market itself. So here we take a look at the uh, holdings, the top eight holdings for the semiconductor index. We begin by taking a look at NVIDIA. Well, look, we've already covered NVIDIA. We don't need to go through that. But Taiwan Semiconductor, you can see the TD9 count bottom. And uh, I won't switch screens here. I'm just going to go look at it on my other screen and see what kind of volume. So the swing point that formed its TD9 count bottom. Uh, that took place on April 11th. And that volume was 12.4 million shares. You're pulling back today with already 11.4. Now, it hasn't gotten to that swing point, And you can see there is profile support at 97.81. Still has that bottom in place out there. Uh, Asimil Holdings, uh, this still has a TD9 count bottom. Question is, what's the uh, volume look like? So again, I'm going to check this out on my other screen. And Azimil is uh, pulling back into the swing point that formed its TD9 count bottom, had a million shares, only 420. Okay, so it's pulling back. It's sitting on support right now, which is the bottom of its daily profile, which is at the 600.95, we're at 601.38. AMD, we've already covered that. Intel, we've covered that. Um, TXN. Uh, you've got a uh, TD9 count bottom here. Uh, Abgo, you're going to get the TD9 count bottom pattern today out here. And then uh, Qualcomm, what is Qualcomm doing? Qualcomm has a TD9 count bottom. So with regard to the SMHs, still everything is intact out here, with the exception being Intel. But its close will be key to helping us understand what it's communicating to us. Uh, but now with regard to all eight of these instruments that make up a majority 
of the weighting inside of the SMHs are going to have valid bottoming signals. So that says uh, come Monday, that should be kind of interesting out here. So there's nothing else that I can see with regard to the NDX or um, the uh, small, uh, the uh, semiconductor indices. So uh, I see we do have one question inside the Tiger's Den. Would love as many questions as we can get just to uh, keep me on track here. That track is just uh, staying focused on these stock charts and what it is that you want. And uh, the question was MU. And that is for in the zone. So uh, let's uh, put M. It's going to take a moment here to populate. Well, actually, I've got to get to the stock chart screen out there. Uh, Mr. Bill's getting ready to pull out that two by four. I, I felt it. I, there was a breeze coming, and then luckily I caught myself. So here we take a look at Micron. Micron also has a TD9 count bottom. Now, price is trading back into that swing point that was that, that did generate that TD9 count bottom. And that was from the trading session of uh, April the 11th. Now, the volume there was uh, 21 million shares. You're pulling back right now at 10 million shares. So you're pulling back in that swing point with light volume. You don't like that it hasn't been able to get above that red oscillator and change line. So I don't know if you're long or strong or weak or what have you. But nice TD9 count bottom on March the 15th. You've got another TD9 count bottom out here on April the 11th. And price is pulling back in that swing point with lighter volume. But if price closes below that, well, the real level that price would have to take out for Micron to say there's some major problems would be a close below 68.34. And that's that low from March the 15th out there. Uh, what else do we see? 15 minutes says expect a rally. TD9 count bottom. Roads momentum indicator bottom. Um, price above the oscillator and change line right now. That, I got a TD9 count bottom on the 30 minute chart. So uh, Micron is about ready to stage a rally. That rally should take us up to the 7140 to 70. 186 level out there. That's coming from our 15 and 30 minute time frame charts. I don't really have anything else from any of the other charts out there. So in the zone, was that in the zone? Is that who that was? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I do hope that that information helps you out. Yeah, I believe that was in the zone. Of course, folks, I would absolutely love to um, uh, get some requests out here. Let me just check. Oh, MOS. Uh, Flip. Flip Wilson wants to take a look at Mosaic out there. So let's do that. And I see Hector wants to take a look at the XLE. So, Flip, we come to you first, and that was uh, Mosaic. And the question is, is Mosaic forming some kind of a top out here? Well, let's go find out. I'll flip. Let's uh, give this uh, just a couple of moments here to uh, populate uh, Mosaic, a, uh, a uh, fertilizer uh, stock out there. Sort of been on fire out here. Still on fire. It's trained above the top of its daily, weekly, and monthly profiles out there. So that looks muy bueno and very strong. Only bar number seven on a monthly uh, basis out here. So that says, uh, Flip, uh, that longer term, this looks good. The weekly says bar number nine. Now, on a TD9 count top, it can occur on bars eight, nine, the bar following nine. So I would say uh, maybe next week, uh, you know, that could be a short-term top. However, the daily says this is going to become a TD9 count top as well with Monday being the key level out there so flip let's do this hopefully you're listening on the show on Monday really Tuesday would probably be the better of the days out there with regard to whether it's a top or not um, so there's the potential for topping signal to form uh, by well really between uh, between yesterday and Monday that's on the short-term basis see Roach with CFNN be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. 
With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go to our request here from Hector and Patty. They are our fuel injectors. And Hector and Patty write in, happy Thirsty Thursday. Absolutely, Hector. And same to uh, you folks. XLE is approaching a high volume high. And so what Hector is looking at, we're looking at the black background screens out here. And uh, we are looking at the trading session. I believe what he's talking about is a trading session from March 8th. And let me get my data box. It'll be easy for you guys to see it as well. The volume that was on that trading session was 98 million shares. The high is 80.22. We're at 80.02 right now. Uh, today's high has been 80.14. So we're just uh, camping underneath that uh, swing point high. Volume today much lighter, 13 million shares. Hector's question is, it's approaching that on a daily basis with light volume. Is still is it still strong, or is this a red flag? The weekly uh, time frame as well has that swing point with 365, 365 million, and you're only at 96 million today. So certainly lighter volume. Well, let's try to go answer that. So volume is only one aspect of trading out there. It's only one stool. And, you know, if you want to just sit on one stool, okay. But we don't sit on one stool. Not during the trader's edge. We go ahead and we take a look at uh, all of the uh, tools to help us understand what the market is communicating to us. In this case, in this case here, it's the energy sector of the S&P 500, the XLE. The monthly time frame shows that we are in bar number seven of a TD9 count. That suggests that price wants to continue to move higher. It's uh, trading right now above 79.11. This is a monthly time frame chart, and 79.11 is a breakdown area. And uh, it is also taking out a TD9 count high, or could be taking that out. So on a monthly basis here, this looks pretty good. It looks like it wants to get back those all-time highs from back in 2014 out there. And that's the energy sector, the XLE. That's the monthly chart. The uh, weekly chart, you're above that oscillator and change line. Bar number seven, Hector and Patty, no topping signal there. Daily time frame, no topping signal other than what you already pointed out. No. Not only is it a high volume high, it also is bar number eight of a TD9 count. So if price is able to close above that level, even if it's on light volume, and again, that level is at 80.22, that will bode well. Now, you're in bar number six, so you can envision even if you can clear above that, you do have a potential TD9 count pattern that is uh, could form uh, late next week out there, and that's coming from the daily time frame. But right now, price is above its oscillator and change line, says it should at least go tag that high. Is it a reason to jettison your positions? I would say no. You'd have to find some type of level of support for price to break through uh, in order for that to happen. Uh, what could those levels be? Well, they 
could be breakout levels such as 7807 on the daily on the 30 minute time frame that's a breakout level out there uh, but some levels of support and we don't have that right now certainly why it's while it's up at its all-time highs out here but what we don't have Hector and Patty, is we don't have the uh, correlated topping signals, even on the intraday charts right now, to suggest that as price is approaching that swing point with light volume, that there's a top that's in place out here. It's not on the 15-minute nor the 30-minute. 65 could or will generate a TD9 count top within the next uh, hour and a half or so. That's the only one where I see any kind of a signal. So, yes, it's approaching a high volume high. It's on lighter volume, but uh, the XLE looks pretty strong out there. And I guess the, the other thing that we'd want to take a look at here, Hector and Patty, just because it's an influencing factor, would be Lightspeed Crude. Now, I don't know if I've got my Lightspeed Crude charts up. I don't on the white background. So what we're going to do is we're going to change screens here and we're going to go take a little like look at lights we crew let's look at it for its multi time frames out here give me a moment to get to that set of charts and see if there's anything that we can pick up on here so here we take a look at these multi time frames look at this you're above the top of the daily profile you're above the top of the weekly profile you're well above the top of the monthly and we don't have or i don't have a way to get the uh, quarterly out here at least not at the uh, moment I guess I do, but I'm not going to go uh, through it. So right now, from a profile standpoint, Hector and Patty, this is in your yesterday and today. You're above a descending trend line on the daily time frame. So the moving lights we crewed looks like it wants to continue higher, and I think that that should bode well for the energy sector. Uh, obviously, Exxon Mobil as well. That's one of the leaders out there. So. Uh, that's what the charts are communicating to us. I don't think that it's a red flag. And uh, you have a great uh, bunny weekend as uh, well out there. Yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, in fact, uh, once this show is over at 2.02, uh, there's some beach time coming for Stevie out here. I think the weather's going to be so-so. And it looks like the guys in the back are working on the landscape. So I think we'll just have to walk over to the beach and get a little bit of sun. I hope everybody else gets to do the uh, same thing out there. So uh, let me just check. I don't believe there's any other requests, but let me just check and make sure. And uh, oh, we do have one. This one coming from Susanna. And Susanna wants to take a look at Bitcoin. So let's take a look at uh, Bitcoin. How am I going to do that? First, got to figure out where I'm at. Okay. So let me get to the Bitcoin futures contracts out here. And then while we're talking about what those are showing us, uh, then I'll get my white background charts uh, set up for us. Susanna. So I guess Bitcoin's like where it should be like right in front of me. But it's where did it go? Bitcoin. But here we go. Okay. So now we're taking a look at Bitcoin. It is still the April contract that is uh, trading. And uh, Bitcoin is uh, trading right now below support. So support is, oh, let me get the white background charts going. Give me a moment, if you would be kind enough to let me do that here. Uh, maybe I'm lucky enough when I get over the radio show charts that I've already got it. And the answer is, uh, no, not that lucky. So let me get uh, BTC and it's April. And it's 2022. So I'm going to get those going. So right now, we're just looking at a left-hand panel chart. You can look at either one. You've got the uh, April contract and the May contract is on the right-hand side. Both of them are trading below key levels of support. In the case of the April contract, that level, Suzanne, is 40.032. We're trading at 39.905. Now, this would only be day number one below the bottom of its profile, it. Uh, but uh, still you close below that says you go back to at least the lows from a couple of days ago. And you get in that same kind of signal information from the uh, May contract as well. Okay, so we've established on a daily basis that if price closes below those lows, they say they want to head to lower price. The question would be to where? And that is a great question. So the 38,920 level, Susanna, is going to be your real key level. That is its TD9 count breakout area. This has a TD9 count bottom. And that says if you see a close below 38,920, it's really not the close below that. It would really be a close below 39,190. But with 38,920 having that, that daily breakout area right there, that's the level that you should watch. Now, what should take place is that uh, – uh, Bitcoin should hold this area, not take out its TD9 count 
bottom and price and that oscillator and change line, which is currently printed at 42.619, should test each other. I'm not saying Bitcoin gets to 42.619. I'm saying that that line and price will test each other or should test each other. But if price does close below 38.920, then you're going to expect price to go tackle the other 2D TD9 count bottom from February 24th, and that level is going to be the 34.515 area. So that's what the white background daily time frame chart is telling us about Bitcoin. Let me see if there is anything going on in the intraday base that we need to pay attention to. 30 minutes just saying, uh, still wants lower price. 60 minute wants lower price. 39,500, 120 minute time frame says that it wants lower price. The 240 minute, you're trading at support. 39,804 out there. And then a five hour chart is below support. That says that it wants lower price. So it looks like Bitcoin wants lower price out there. The question is, watch that TD9 count on the daily basis. More so, watch the breakout level. 38,920. So, oh, Susanna, I hope that helps you out. Thanks much for writing in, and you have a fantastic weekend. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We'll be back with a two-minute wrap-up as soon as we hear some commercials. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so we've got the uh, Dow up 75 points. The S&P's off 25. NASDAQ's off 202. Russell's down 9. Trainees are up 33. So we got a bit of a mixed bag out here. Uh, let's uh, go spend a little time here with our NASDAQ chart. So we took a look at the NQ. We looked at all four time frames where our TAS market breadth dials to compare um, uh, the number of instruments trading above the top of profiles for the time frame and below. And those time frames are 60 minute, 240, four hours, daily and weekly out there. And everything was in a bearish position. Now we take a look at the uh, this multi time frame set of charts here for the NQ. If you begin with just simply a five minute chart, TD9 count bottom, Rose Mintum indicator bottom, price getting right up to its breakdown resistance level 1403375. So, you know your first level of resistance 1403375. If price is able to clear that, well, the 10 minute has a TD9 count Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. It's above the top of its profile, and that says you get above 14033, price will go run to 1407975. So now you got those targets. 15 minute chart here, I don't have anything. Uh, maybe there's an A to B equals CD, but with the other time frame showing bottom signals, we don't have to worry about that. We go to the 30-minute time frame chart, same kind of signal out there. Resistance here is in 14039 to 14060. 60-minute time frame forms a TD9 count bottom as we come on the air, right at a uh, TD9 count breakout level. The oscillator and change line for it has changed colors. This is suggesting that the oscillator and change line and price want to test each other. While the OUL is right at the 14130 level, price at 14013. So the 60-minute the 10-minute, uh, the 5-minute are saying higher price. The 5-minute says, well, I'm not going to say higher price until you clear 14.033. Then you go up to 14.079. If you can clear 14.079, then you're up to the 14.131 level. The 120-minute time frame chart, which had a TD9 count bottom, price is pulled back to its breakout support level of 13.993. Support is held on the 5-hour time frame chart. You've got that TD9 count bottom with price is support in the daily profile. What's this suggest? Folks, watch 1403375. You see a close above that? And that's your message as to what the market's intentions are going into the close. Stay tuned. Your favorite polar bears up next. That's David White. Tom O'Brien will take us home. Have a fantastic holiday weekend, folks. I'll see you on Monday.